The launch of FSR 2.0 from AMD is incredibly exciting for AMD users, but it's also at least potentially exciting for NVIDIA GPU users, ones who don't have the fancy RTX cards. What if you have a GTX card? NVIDIA's had DLSS locked down to its RTX cards with the excuse that, that it requires the tensor cores that the RTX cards have that the GTX cards don't. But with FSR offering a very similar solution with very similar image quality and performance to DLSS, with FSR 2.0, can the GTX cards run it? Well, according to AMD's official post when they announced FSR 2.0, they said for even running it at 1080p, they recommended a GTX 1070 or higher. So in this video, naturally, I'm gonna use a 10, wait, not a 1070, I'm gonna use a 1060. Because my thought is, if this can run on a 1070, it can probably run on a 1060. The question isn't, can it run? It's, can it compute the FSR algorithm fast enough to where it still gets a noticeable and worthwhile performance boost by running it? And that's what we're gonna test out here. And we're gonna test it at 1080p. And if that's working, we're gonna try 1440p. And if that's working, we might even try 4K just for fun. Now, currently the only game with FSR 2.0 is Deathloop, so that's the game that we're gonna be using. Let's go ahead, jump right in, and test this thing out. All right, here we are with the GTX 1060. We are in Deathloop. Let's take a look at the settings. It's warning me that the VRAM usage might be too high, but hey, we're only at 1080p. Uh, if you're like, go into full screen, not borderless. Uh, guys, I'm not an actual 1080p monitor, so to get it to not stretch on my screen so I see things accurately, we're in borderless. And in a lot of DX12 games, there's no penalty. I'm not sure about this one. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and take a look. Currently, upscaling is off, and the graphics settings are at high. And the 1060 is already not at 60 FPS. And as we look out here, we can tell that we drop into the 40s. Now... The settings go way beyond high in this game, so we can see that this GPU is certainly struggling, and it would be nice to give it a performance boost. So, let's find out whether or not AMD's FSR 2.0 can actually work here. As I probably mentioned in the intro to this video, which I'm actually filming after this current part, <laughs> and then editing together, the um, official support list for FSR 2.0 starts out with the 1070, but there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to try it out. And, and the question mark is, is it actually going to help our performance? So we have now kicked on. Now this is FSR 1.0. Let's try out FSR 2.0. And it has an adaptive resolution where it'll get a frame rate target, but I'd like to just know what we're getting. So I'm gonna switch it to quality just for the sake of testing and knowing what we are actually trying. So let's see if our frame rate actually improves. And it does. So I think we can at least confirm this not only does work on a GTX 1060, but it also works well enough to boost the frame rate. Now, I think we're not getting a massive boost out of it, uh, you know, because the hardware isn't super fast at computing this, but we can see that it is certainly helping compared to what we were getting without it. Now, let's go ahead and compare image quality wise FSR 1.0, which uh, previously we could have used. So if we go back to FSR 1.0 at the ultra quality setting, let's see which one gets us a better frame rate. Okay, it's a similar frame rate. But image quality wise, in the fine details, I think the FSR 2.0 is definitely looking better. Like FSR 1.0, when we look at this foliage, that does look quite uh, shimmery to me. Let's go ahead and take a look at the FSR 2.0. Let's see, that was over here. And that looks significantly more stable on the image. So yeah, this looks significantly better than FSR 1.0. Now, in motion, at a low resolution like 1080p, it doesn't look quite as good as it does motionless, but this is certainly helping out our frame rate 
compared to native. Let's go back to the native image for that comparison though. So we'll try out options and we will turn these back off. It's annoying that it scrolls back to the top every time I do that, but all right. So upscaling should be off now. And notice, okay, I think when I turn that off, I can tell the anti-aliasing turned itself off. So if you're playing around with this, comparing to native, make sure that you didn't allow it to uh, turn off. Well, yeah, look, the, the anti-aliasing got turned off. So let's go back to temporal anti-aliasing. So we're getting a fair comparison here. Okay, yeah, that looks much more stable. Although, yeah, I think the frame rate is significantly lower here than what we were getting using FSR 2.0. So I think we have confirmed that this not only works on the GTX 1060, but it works well enough to possibly be con uh, a consideration for use. But what I'd like to do now is see if we could actually get this game playable at 1440p uh, using FSR 2.0. All right, I've switched the game over to 1440p. I also lowered the settings to medium in order to give us a realistic shot at maybe getting to 60 FPS, uh, but I did adjust the anti-aliasing back to temporal for testing the native image quality uh, because I do think that that is the best option to go with here. And as you can see, currently the upscaling is turned off. So upscaling turned off. And we are in the mid 40s in this scene. As we look out here with more going on, we drop down into the 30s. So let's have a look if um, FSR 2.0 can do anything for us. Go with yes. All right, and our frame rate has boosted a little bit, right? <laughs> it's not a ton. But the image quality still looks quite good. I know you guys will be dealing with YouTube compression, but the image quality really does still look very close to the native image quality. This is quite good. This is very, very close to what DLSS does, but the, uh, you know, Nvidia doesn't allow DLSS to run on their non-RTX cards. Let's try pushing this down to the balance setting and see if that gets us any more frames. Okay, I'm, I'm starting to see some drop to the image quality there, a little bit more shimmering to the expand your mind. So it's, it's struggling a bit more to reconstruct from this uh, graphic setting level. I mean, from this uh, re internal resolution. Let's go all the way down to performance, which to be honest is probably not gonna look great. Getting our frame rate all the way up to around 50 though now. So it's helping significantly. And while performance is certainly not identical to native, like I can see a loss of some of the detail in this, um, the little railings up there. Like this is certainly not native 1440p. This looks a lot better than the internal resolution that it's rendering from. So let's once again go back to, actually let's, let's compare it to um, FSR 1.0. So let's go to FSR 1.0 and go straight down to the uh, performance setting on that one. <laughs> and I think you guys can tell that, look at the massive image quality loss that we're getting on this expand your mind. You can barely read the sign. The details on these letterings look very fuzzy. Things are kind of unstable as I, as I move. we got this shimmering mess of railings up here. Although the frame rate might be slightly better than what we were getting on the quality mode of FS, sorry, on the uh, performance mode with FSR 2.0. But man, this does seem to be a, a significant difference between them. So just to, once again, let, let's look at the FSR 2.0 performance mm -hmm. mode. So we're still a bit shimmery on the sign, but it's significantly more stable. We have a lot more detail up here. And I feel like the frame rate, yeah, this frame rate's not quite as good as we were getting from the FSR 1.0. So just from a straight up performance boost, that one is better, but just it's destroying the image quality so badly at those performance settings. I really don't think I would use it. So once again, let's go ahead 
and compare to the native image quality and performance. All right. So once again, we're, we're around 34 FPS here without using FSR 2.0. So I've got to say that this is actually extremely impressive. Should I test it at 4K? Would that be completely stupid? <laughs> okay, 4K at medium settings with the temporal anti-aliasing. And we are well below 30 FPS. And I'm curious what FSR 2.0 can do. I don't think we're gonna hit 60 FPS, but could we actually get a playable and reasonable ima looking image? I'm kind of excited to find out. Uh, so let's go with the upscaling, FSR 2.0. And let's go, should we go straight to the performance setting? Let's, let's scroll through them. Let's start out with the quality setting. And the quality setting is not getting us to a locked 30 FPS, but it's making some improvement. <laughs> let's scroll right over to the next option because that performance level was still very much not what I'm looking for. Let's go to balanced. Okay, not a huge boost. This honestly might just be too much of an ask for the GTX 1060. But, you know, we can try out the performance mode, which I'm pretty sure would be rendering at 1080p and then trying to upscale to 4K using the FSR 2.0 algorithm. All right, performance mode. Ah, it's not gonna get us 30 FPS. I was hoping it would, although I can tell you right now that just mouse movement wise, this feels a lot better than it did without it. And you know, it doesn't look like native 4K, but it does look a lot better than just running at 1080p on a 4K screen. Well, this has been fun. I can confirm that FSR 2.0 works, and I'll give you some of my final thoughts here at the end. All right, so my final thoughts are I'm very excited to see that this does work on the GTX 1060. And in any game that it's implemented in, I think this is absolutely going to be a viable option for increasing your performance. Now, at 1080p, the image quality does not look as good as the native image quality, but it does look a lot better than using an FSR 1.0 upscale or running the game at below 1080p on a 1080p screen. So I think it's gonna be, on a case-by-case -case basis in games, a question of should you just turn down settings or would it make sense to use the FSR 2.0 option. And at a certain point in the GTX 1060's lifespan, you'll hit a point where even running the game at its lowest settings isn't going to give you the performance you're looking for. And so using FSR uh, 2.0 in any game it's implemented in, I think could dramatically increase the lifespan of the GTX 1060, which is incredibly exciting. And it's also, to me, this all begs the question of could NVIDIA actually make DLSS or some similar version of it run on its GTX cards? Was this actually all along an artificial limit in order to sell RTX cards? So <laughs> that's a question that I can't answer, but I can say it certainly looks like you can run something a lot like DLSS on the GTX 1060 successfully, which is good to see. And I think the biggest question left for FSR 2.0 is game support. This needs to get into a lot of games as soon as possible, uh, for uh, both for AMD and it'll be exciting to see on the GTX cards. Now for my future testing here, I'm certainly gonna look at this on some AMD cards as well, maybe test out ray tracing performance with it on. So stay tuned to the channel if you're interested in all of that. And I hope all of you have an excellent day.